Hello everybody. I just filmed half of this video without realizing that I wasn't actually recording. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so, to restart. <laughs> How are you guys? I'm doing well. Uh, it is now at the end of the afternoon, so there's not a lot of light coming in through my windows. So I'm using this lamp above my desk, which, as you can see, does make a bit of difference. Um, my hair is curly. It looks very nice. Uh, because I went to a party last Saturday and my mum braided my hair, and it is now Wednesday. It's the day was the day I finally took the braids out, because if you've got braids, it means you don't have to brush your hair. So obviously I was going to keep them in as long as possible, but then it became too messy and I was like, you know what, let's just try the curly thing now. And I think it looks nice. So anyway, <laughs> onto the video. Oh wait, no, wait, look, I got a ring. I bought myself a ring. Look at it. I don't know what kind of stone this is, but I got it from a man in our street. He makes rings custom made. Uh, I got to choose the stone and um, how the model, and he made it for me. So really nice. Today's review is about the book The Number of Love by Roseanne M. White. I did not enjoy it because I spent the majority of the book wishing it were a different genre. Which means I think we can safely say that romance is not my thing. Um, so the book itself, I guess, wasn't bad per se. So parts of this review are going to be pretty subjective. And if you do like romance, they will not be applicable to you. But there are also some other things. Uh, the book is written by Roseanne and White, Rosanna and White, and it follows young Margot the Wild. I have no idea how to pronounce her last name because she's from Belgium, right? So Margot, I'm gonna assume she's from the French-speaking part, which makes sense from all of the things we saw in the book. So her first name is obviously Mar uh, Margot, but then the Wild, I don't know how to pronounce that because like the Wilde is what it would be if it were a Dutch name. I don't know how to pronounce it in French. So I'm just going to pronounce it in the English way, uh, because De Wilde is not a name we have. So I'm going to say Margot de Wilde, because that's probably what the author meant anyway. So Margot works in room 40, which was uh, Great Britain's code-breaking department during World War I. Margot is very mathematically inclined, and she thinks in numbers. And at one point she actually says that God is the only person she knows for sure is smarter than she is. Yes, so humble. So, so, you know, uh, I don't even know a good reaction to this. I'm trying to be funny here, but I'm honestly kind of, it's just, she literally said that, that God was the only person that she knew for sure was smarter than she was. You may be mathematically smarter than everybody, but socially and emotionally, you are clearly not that smart, because that is a very lame remark. She does say it in her head, though, so it's not like she said it to somebody else. In which case, she would be very stupid, but... <sighs> Sorry, I'm already, I'm already, I'm already getting worked up about this, because... It's just so rude. It's, it's just very rude, okay? Don't, don't go around saying you're smarter than literally every single other person on the planet. Please don't, okay? Anyway, sorry, <laughs> anyway, uh, she hates it when girls giggle at boys, and I don't think she ever says it, but she's basically not like other girls. Now, that is fine, okay? If you don't fit in with the normal standard for girls, I don't care, okay? Go ahead and be you, okay? Seriously. But the poor... Well, I was about to speak in baby language. This is taking too long. Let's hurry this up. The problem with it is that it sounded very much like she thought she was better than other girls. Uh, Margot is obviously very convinced that she will never marry. And then she meets Drake, who is a secret agent of Spanish descent. You know how this is gonna end. Now, the problem with romance books, for me at least, is that if you read enough of them, you know pretty much what's going to happen. You know, the whole point of the book is that it's a romance, which means the two main characters are going to get together. Um, if that wouldn't be the case, the whole book would be for nothing. So while reading endless pages about the characters' internal conflicts, there was never any doubt in my mind as to what their final decision would be. 
And this in turn made the whole will they, won't they dynamic rather boring and useless. If it's certain something is going to happen, I'd rather not plow through all the mental gymnastics necessary to get to that point, because I already know where we're going to end up. Even exciting side plots, such as the one in this book of a German spy out for revenge, are a lot less suspenseful when the people in danger are the ones who are in love, because if they die, they can't end up together, and therefore they will not die. My second main gripe was Margot. Oh, sorry, my laptop was giving me notifications. Yes, go away. I don't care that there's no Wi-Fi. Okay. My second main gripe was the main character, Margot, because she is insufferable. Ugh. I already mentioned above how she's typ the typical not like other girls figure, which once again is fine. However, she has the vibes that make it sound like she thinks she's better than all of the other girls. And that always makes you wonder who the audience is, what the audience is that the author is trying to attract. Because I am definitely not attracted to a character who, uh, even though she shares my love for math mathematics, clearly would think I was an idiot if she met me. Um, Margot constantly reminds us that she doesn't follow society's standards, that she's not girly, that she's special, and I couldn't care less. Seriously, do what you want, girl, okay? Wanting to marry and not wanting to are both fine. Liking makeup and not caring about it are both fine. It, it's not that difficult, okay? One isn't better than the other. They're just life choices. Nobody cares. She also made a point of not caring about her appearance, because apparently that's lightheaded or something, and... I'm just gonna say, if you don't care what you look like, you have to fix that attitude. Because God made you beautiful. The least you can do is make yourself look presentable. I mean, you don't have to care about clothes, or fashion, or makeup, or whatever. But not caring what you look like at all is stupid. And it makes you look really dumb. And lastly, being ugly or plain is not a badge of honor. Stop acting like that makes you special, okay? I don't care what you look like, as long as you're nice. So, parading around being like, I'm not pretty, I'm not beautiful, and that makes me better than you, is like, okay. I mean, it's not a flex, but go on, I guess. Uh, anyway, as you can see, this book was not for me at all. Part of the reason was subjective, but the other part is really something that I don't think is a good trend in books. Because girls looking down on other girls for being too girly and for giggling is wrong. You know, God made us this way. And if you are a bit different than a typical image of a girl, that's fine. God made you that way. It doesn't make you better than anybody else, though. And as somebody who likes mathematics, don't worry. I don't look down on you. I just acknowledge that I'm the most rational person in the room. And then I move on. Good day, peasants. I'm out.